Hi there guys, in this video, I'm going to show you the most important tips and tricks for your OnePlus Nord 4. By the way, do hit the like button or dislike button. It helps the channel a lot. We'll also be uploading a dedicated video for the best feature section where I'll be talking about all the features available on this phone. So definitely check out that video as well. Link will be in the description. Now with that said, first I'll start off with the navigation gestures. Once you turn on the navigation gestures, you can swipe from the bottom of the screen to go home. You can swipe and hold for recent apps. To go back a step, you can swipe from the left side of the screen or the right side of the screen and your phone will take you back a step. For Google Assistant, you can swipe from the bottom left corner or the bottom right corner diagonally and it will trigger Google Assistant. Besides that, you can also quickly switch between applications by simply swiping left or right on the bottom bar of the screen. This particular feature works just like on an iPhone. Next we have Beacon Link. Now this is a brand new feature which is pretty useful in emergency situations. In situations where there is no mobile network around, you can use your Bluetooth connection to make calls. Obviously it's not very useful on normal days, but if there's a natural disaster or if you're on a trekking trip where there's no mobile signal, you can definitely use this feature. So do give it a try. Next we have Quick Launch. Once you enable this feature, every time you unlock your phone, if you press and hold the fingerprint button, you can see some quick shortcuts. From settings, you can change these applications to your favorite applications as well. This particular feature can greatly improve your productivity. To open any of these applications, just move your finger to the corresponding application and release the finger and it opens that application. Next we have some important battery related settings. First of all, we can check out your battery health directly from the settings. You don't need to install any third party application. You get it by default in your settings page. Next, we have a feature called smart charging. Once you enable this feature, your phone will analyze how you're charging your phone. And based on that, it'll change the charging speed to have a better battery life. You can also enable your phone to limit charging up to 80% so that whenever your battery reaches 80%, charging will stop. This is another useful feature that can keep your battery more healthy. Next, we have AI Eraser. Now, this is a brand new name, not a feature, it's a brand new name because earlier they used to call it Object Eraser. Anyway, in the Photos app, you can select on any photo, go to Edit and you get to see this AI Eraser. We also have options like Smart Lasso. Using this, you can circle the object that you want to remove and AI will detect the object and remove it from the picture. We also have Paint Over. You can use this to paint over the object you want to remove and AI will generate something on top of the object. We can also remove people. If you select this, AI will automatically highlight people in the picture. So you can use this cutout to save as a copy or remove them from the picture. Next, we have a pretty cool shortcut to start or open split screen mode. This feature is enabled by default. Just make sure this particular toggle is enabled. And if it is enabled, you can just swipe up using three fingers to open the current application in a split screen mode. Some of the applications will not support this feature. With that said, most of the applications, especially third party applications, do support split screen mode. Next, we have an interesting feature called flexible windows. Now this feature allows you to open applications in a pop-up window. Once you enable this feature, you'll get a sidebar along with an indication. You can just swipe on it to open the sidebar. You can just click on any of them to open an application in a floating window. Besides using the sidebar, you can open this flexible window directly from the recent apps page. Once you're in the recent apps page, just press and hold on the application and move it to the top. You'll get a semicircular animation at the top. And once you see that, you can release the app and that application will open in a floating window. Now you can move around this app just by holding the bar at the top. Now you can use this floating window just like a regular application. Now we can also resize this floating window by just dragging the bottom left corner or the bottom right corner. If you resize it to become much smaller, it'll enter the mini mode. In the mini mode, it'll become a standard size and go to the top left corner or the top right corner. Now in this mode, you can just do a single click to open that application in a floating window or else do a double click to open that application in a full size window. I mean like a full sized application. Next, we can also quickly hide these floating windows. Just bring the window to the left corner or the right corner and then the application will hide. And finally, right now, using this flexible window feature, we can only open one application in a floating window, at least right now. Maybe we'll be able to open more in the future. Next, we can also change fonts on this phone. You can choose between some pre-installed ones or just download the ones you like. Next, 
Next, I'm going to show you how you can hide files. Now on this phone, there's a feature called privacy safe, which allows you to hide files, any file like documents, video files, music files. You can literally hide any files. Once you enable this feature, you can directly go to the private safe and hide files or else no matter where you are, whether it's the gallery or a file manager, you can select the file and click share and then send it to the privacy safe. And that particular file will be automatically hidden. It's a pretty cool feature that comes built into the phone. Next, we can also hide applications on your phone. Let's say you want to hide some net banking related applications or authenticator applications, then you can do that on this phone. Just go to the settings, hide apps, and from here, just set up the password and the keyword stuff. And once it's done, just select the applications that you want to hide, click OK, and all those applications will be hidden from the default app drawer. Now to open those hidden applications, just open the phone dialer, enter the secret code, and now you can access those hidden applications. By the way guys, your phone really doesn't actually hide those applications. It'll just hide it from the default home launcher. If you install a new launcher or if you directly search for those apps in the Play Store, you can still find them. Well, there's no problem with the phone. It's just how the feature works. And honestly, you really can't actually hide apps on your phone. Next, I'm going to show you how you can lock applications. Once again, if you have some security related apps that you don't want others to open easily, then you can lock all those applications. Just go to settings and from the privacy section, you can access the lock apps feature. From here, you can lock all the applications that you want. By the way, we can also use face unlock and fingerprint unlock to unlock those locked applications just for a bit more convenience. If you're going to lock up some important apps like net banking applications or something related to stocks and stuff, then I would recommend you not to use the fingerprint and face unlock features. Better enter the password yourself. Next, we have smart sidebar. Now this is another super handy feature. Once you enable it, you can access a sidebar by just swiping from the upper edge. In the sidebar, you have some quick shortcuts to some actions and some quick shortcuts to applications. You can just drag any of these applications out to open them in a floating window. It's a super useful feature. Next, we have super power saving mode. Once you enable this feature, your phone will turn on the dark mode and stop all the applications running in the background and it'll just give you access to four applications. By doing all this, you can increase the standby time of your phone. If you are ever low on battery and you don't want your phone to switch off, you can try this mode. Next, we have a new gesture called icon pull down gesture. Now, once you enable this feature on your home screen, you can swipe diagonally on the left side or right side to quickly pull down all the icons near your finger. It's just a quick and easy way to reach out applications just with a single finger. Next, we have swipe down gesture on the home screen. By default, it is set to search or global search. Once you do a swipe down gesture, you can search for application names or even contacts directly from your home screen. I personally suggest you to change it to notification draw. Once you do that, you can do a swipe down gesture to pull down the notification bar, which I think is much more helpful. Next, we can also change the display resolution on this phone. Personally, I would suggest you to keep it at the highest resolution to get the best experience. It affects the battery a little, but it adds to the overall experience and we are paying for the best experience. Next, we can also change the display refresh rate of this phone. This phone has a display with 120Hz refresh rate. By default, it is set to auto switch. It can save some battery, but sometimes can give you an inconsistent experience. So I'll suggest you to stick with the highest refresh rate. It affects the battery a little, but gives you a much more consistent experience. Next, we got some new live wallpapers. Some are just like videos on loop, some wallpapers react to your touch, and some change depending on the time. For these wallpapers, you can just touch and hold the wallpaper for a quick preview. Right now, we can only use the install live wallpapers. In future, we might be able to use a regular video as a live wallpaper. Next, we have dark mode. You can enable it from the notification toggles or directly from the display settings. And once you enable the dark mode, all the system UI elements change to dark mode. Even some of the stock applications like phone dialer, messaging application also change to dark mode and even some Google applications like Play Store or YouTube switch to the dark mode automatically. Dark mode helps your phone look much more cooler, helps you save some battery and puts less strain on your eyes at night. Next, we have always on display. 
it's a feature that puts a clock on your lock screen all the time. Now here's a quick preview. From settings, you can also change the clock styles and you can also schedule it to automatically turn on and turn off at a specific time to save a little bit of battery. Next, I'm going to show you different ways to take a screenshot on this phone. So first we have the normal way where we can use the buttons. Just press the volume down and power button both at the same time to take a screenshot. Next we have three finger screenshot gesture. Now this feature is enabled by default. To take a screenshot, you can just swipe down using three fingers and your phone will take a screenshot. It's just like pressing the buttons, but instead of pressing the buttons, you just need to swipe down using three fingers and your phone will take a screenshot. Personally, this is my favorite way to take a screenshot. Next, I'm going to show you how to take a long screenshot. For that, first take a regular screenshot and then click on the preview. Now select scroll. Now you need to scroll the page. And once you're done, you'll get a long screenshot. Next, I'm going to show you how to record the screen on your phone. For that, first go to the toggles. And now we can start video recording just by using this toggle. Just click it and screen recording should start in 3 seconds. If your phone asks for any permissions, just grant them all. Next, I'm going to show you some camera gestures. First, we have touch. Once you enable this feature, we can take a picture by just touching the preview screen. It works for both the rear camera and even for selfies. Next, we have the palm gesture, which only works for the front camera, and it's great for taking selfies. Just enable it and then show your palm to the front camera, and your phone will take a picture in just 2 seconds. Next, I'm going to show you how to trigger Google Assistant with the power button. Just enable this toggle, and now press and hold the power button to trigger Google Assistant. Next, we have some important screen off gestures. We have things like double tap to wake. We can also draw a node to open the camera application. Next, we can draw a V to turn on the flash. We also have more like music controls and custom shortcuts. But most of the time, I just draw V to turn on the flash. And to turn it off, we can press the power button. Next, I'm going to show you how you can change your default apps. Whether you want to change your default launcher, default browser or anything, for that we need to first go to settings. Once you're in settings, select apps. Then select default apps. Now from this page, you can change your default launcher, default SMS application, browser and so on. I would definitely recommend you to change your default browser to Google Chrome. Next, I'm going to show you how to display the battery percentage on the status bar. For that, go to settings, then select notification and status bar and then Enable this toggle. Once you do that, we can see the battery percentage on the status bar. In the same way, if you want to see the network usage on the status bar, go to settings, then select notification and status bar. Enable this toggle. Next, I'm going to show you how to display the RAM information on the recent apps page. For that, go to settings, then select additional settings. And now enable this toggle. Once you do that, we can see the RAM or memory information in the recent apps page. Next we have notification history. Now this is a pretty cool feature that can record all the notifications that you get. So even if you accidentally clear all the notifications from the notification area, you can go to the notification history section to see what all notifications you got and at which particular time. Next we have the toggle to enable the OTG. Now OTG pen drives are not automatically detected by default. It's a security measure. So if you want to use an OTG pen drive, just come here, enable it, and then you can use an OTG pen drive. Next we have recently deleted. In your albums application or gallery application, whenever you delete anything, it won't get deleted immediately. All those deleted files will be put in recently deleted folder. You can access it from here. If you want, you can once again delete them. You can also choose to disable this feature from settings. Next we have app battery management. Now if you want to completely take control of your phone, stop applications from auto launching or stop applications from running in the background to save data or to save battery, 
you can do all that from here. So guys, these are all the most important tips and tricks for your OnePlus Nord 4. If I missed out on anything important, do let me know by commenting below this video. With that said, if you like this video, hit the like button or dislike button. It really helps the channel. And with that said, see you next time.